Wilson's theorem is a beautiful theorem in number theory, and it's so elegant. We're gonna do it in this video, we're gonna state and prove it and understand a lot of fun number theory along the way. So here we have the statement that a number P is prime if and only if P minus one factorial is congruent to minus one modulo P, which is to say that when you divide P minus one factorial by P, the remainder is going to be P minus one. Okay, that's what the theorem is saying. And it's a very elegant result, but why is it true and how do we understand it? So let's just dive into it. And first I'm gonna prove one direction that this is in some sense a primality testing, not a very efficient one because it's very difficult to compute P minus one factorial, but if P is composite, then this is not true. So let's understand what happens in the composite case to give us some warm up for the general case. Okay, so the first case is let's say M is composite. Okay, so I'm gonna, instead of calling it P, I'm gonna call it M. M is a composite number. Then how do we find M minus one factorial modulo M? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that, okay, M is composite, so we can write M as A times B, where we can say that A and B are both between one and M, but not inclusive, okay? So it's not M equals M times one. Now, once we've done that, we can observe that M minus one factorial, M minus one factorial is going to have A and B inside it, right? Because it's going to be M minus one times M minus two times so on and so forth, all the way up to times three times two times one. So in particular, A and B are going to be inside M minus one factorial. And if A, B is inside this product, A and B are inside this product, their product is also going to be. So therefore M is a factor of M minus one factorial. Okay, so M is a factor, M equals A, B is a factor of M minus one factorial. And of course, that implies that when you take the remainder, when you divide M minus one factorial by M, it's gonna be zero. So M minus one factorial is congruent to zero modulo M, not minus one modulo M. Okay, so pretty cool. That's the first statement. But the second statement is that if M were prime, if M was equal to P, then in fact, if you take the remainder when you divide by P, you'll get P minus one, which is the same as saying it's congruent to minus one mod P. Why is that? It's gonna be a fun little proof. And I just wanna mention that Wilson's theorem has powerful applications. For example, you can use it to show that a prime congruent to one modulo four is always the sum of two squares. It's a very beautiful result. If you wanna see a video on that, please drop a comment down below. And if you're enjoying my content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the channel. I love all the engagement on the channel and I love creating this fun math education all for free. So let's just dive into the next step. All right, so the next step is how do we understand P minus one factorial if P is a prime number? So let's look at P minus one factorial. And what we're gonna do is we're going to group up terms in P minus one factorial. Okay, it's gonna be very interesting. The first observation, okay, so I'm gonna make this observation one, is that if we have a pair of numbers, if we have a single number less than P minus one, okay, less than or equal to P minus one. So let's say you have a number one less than or equal to A less than or equal to P minus one, okay? so. It's something inside the product of P minus one factorial is a product of all the numbers that are less than or equal to P minus one. So you pick one of, the, one of those numbers, we can find what is called an inverse of A modulo P. Okay, so what that means is we can find a B such that A times B is congruent to one modulo P. Okay, so as far as we're concerned, A and B are multiplicative inverses of each other modulo p. The remainder when you divide by p is one, so it's equal to one modulo p, but not obviously equal to one in general. So how do we actually find that b? And that's a very important statement called Bezu's identity. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce that to you right now, and it's very simple, okay? It's not complicated at all. The idea is that if you have two numbers, so in this case, we're gonna take a and we're going to take p, okay? Two numbers, and if they're relatively prime, okay? They don't have any factor in common, which is the case because p is a prime number. So there's no factor of p that can be a factor of a since a is less than p. So in particular, Bezos, um, Bezos identity tells us we can find a, what is called a linear combination of a and p. So a multiple of a plus a multiple of p so that their sum is going to equal to one. Okay, we can write one as such a, in such a form as a multiple of a plus a multiple of p. And of course, there's going to be y or x is going to be negative, okay, so that, this sort of cancels out and becomes one. But what that tells us is that AX plus PY is one. Another way of writing that out is that AX is going to be congruent to one mod P because basically the difference between AX and a multiple of P is equal to one. Okay, so AX is then going to be congruent to one modulo P 
And of course, we can take x to be our b. We found a b, so that ab is congruent to 1 mod p. So why is this interesting? This is actually a core concept that if you look at the numbers modulo p, they form what's called a field. You have addition, multiplication, and you also have inverses, multiplicative inverses, okay, which is very special to prime numbers. Okay, and so because of that, we can find this, this inverse of every a that's between 1 and p minus 1. And now we can find what this is modulo p. Okay, we can find what this is modulo p, and I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to write it out. All right, so the trick is, it's a very beautiful trick. We're going to look at p minus 1 factorial, which is p minus 1 times p minus 2, and so forth. And you may be asking how we're going to get the minus 1 mod p. Okay, so how is this going to work? So what we're going to do is we're going to pair up terms. We know that every number in this product has a multiplicative inverse modulo p. So if we're trying to find out what this is modulo p when you divide by p, you just need to basically pair up numbers so they multiply to be 1 mod p, which is easy enough to understand. Okay, so for example, you have a bunch of numbers all that are between 1 and p minus 1. You're going to have these pairs, right? And they're going to all multiply to 1 mod p. Each one is going to multiply to 1 mod p, each pair. Now, assuming that all the pairs don't, uh, that, that basically they're just these bunches of pairs, we can then multiply them all and just get 1 mod p. But what's wrong with that? Because basically we are supposed to get minus 1. Well, what's wrong is that some numbers pair up with themselves. They don't pair up with something else. Okay, And one such number is 1 and one such number is minus 1. Okay, And how do you actually prove they're the only ones? Okay, so first of all, of course, we understand the inverse of 1 mod p is just going to be 1 mod p, right? 1 times 1 is 1 mod p, and the inverse of minus 1 p mod p is going to be minus 1 mod p, right? And this is even true for the integers. Minus 1, 1 over minus 1 is literally minus 1. So basically, this is also going to be 1 mod p. So in this case, we're going to not get a pair. Okay, so all the pairs are going to multiply to 1 mod p, except 1 and minus 1 are not going to be paired up with anything else. They're going to be paired up with themselves. So we have to multiply them separately, and then we're going to get 1 times minus 1. And so the entire product, we're going to have all these pairs congruent to 1 mod p. We're going to multiply with 1 congruent to 1 mod p, and then the minus 1 is going to make it minus 1 mod p. But in order to make this a complete proof, I need to explain why 1 and minus 1 are the only numbers that don't pair up with anything else, okay? Because we need to be rigorous, because maybe we even missed this whole idea of the minus 1 and just said the answer was 1 without being careful that some things could pair up with themselves. So why is it that other things can't pair up with themselves? And this is another beautiful concept in algebra, working modulo p is what we can do is we can look at the equation x squared minus 1, okay, uh, modulo p. Okay, we're going to look at this polynomial, this quadratic. Okay, so a solution is a number that pairs with itself, right? A solution to this modulo p, so I'm going to say this congruent to 0 mod p, what are the solutions modulo p? They're going to be the x's that pair up with themselves to be inverses of themselves mod p. x times x is going to be 1 mod p if x squared minus 1 is 0 mod p. So in particular, what we need to do is we need to understand what the solutions are. And I'm being super careful. We're going to have to use the fact that p is prime, okay? Because it's not true if p is not prime that there's only going to be 1 and minus 1 as the only solutions, okay? So for example, you know, I, I'll give you some examples later. But what we can do is we can just look at this case. And we can factor x squared minus 1 as x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, that's all true modulo p because it is true in the integers. Okay, it's an equation that's generally true. You can literally do the same application, the same laws to say this is true modulo p. And so therefore, you have a product of two numbers. If x squared minus 1 is 0, you have a product of two numbers that is divisible by p. And a fundamental property of prime numbers, and I'm going to link this video as well. Okay, so we've got Bayes' theorem and we've got this fundamental property of prime numbers is that if a prime number divides a product of two numbers, and I'm going to write it out on this side of the board to be very precise. So fundamental property of prime numbers is that if p divides a product, so in this case, you know, p divides x minus 1 times x plus 1, p has to actually divide one of those two. And this is precisely because p is prime. So therefore, p divides x minus 1 or p divides x plus 1. And what we know now is that therefore either if p divides x minus 1, that means x is congruent to 1 mod p. Okay, because x minus 1 is divisible by p. So a difference of two numbers is divisible by p is to say they're congruent mod p. So therefore x is congruent to 1 mod p or x is congruent to minus 1 mod p. 
And of course, that's all there is to it. That, that shows that the only numbers that pair with themselves as multiplicative inverses are one and minus one. And as I said, you know, as an example, if you take modulo eight, if you don't have a prime, then you could have three squared is equal to nine, which is congruent to one mod eight. But of course, three is not one or minus one mod eight. Minus one mod eight is seven mod eight. So you have more solutions to this equation, x squared minus one. So it's very deceptive. You know, you have to be careful when you're going to new number systems. But this is what's called a field, okay? If you haven't seen that before. So you have to be very careful about that. So that's the video. And I hope you love that proof of Wilson's theorem. It's so beautiful. It has so many applications. Thanks so much to Alex and Nathan for their ongoing support on Patreon. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And if you want to consider supporting on Patreon, please check out the link in the description. The exclusive perks, for example, access to a members only Discord server, exclusive updates and news about my YouTube channel, priority replies to YouTube comments, personalized thank you message, and I'm just gonna be so grateful to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It makes a huge difference in the long run. Every contribution, no matter how small, matters a lot. So thanks so much to everyone. Not just, you know, even if you didn't support, thanks so much for watching, liking, spreading the word to friends and family. It makes a huge difference. If you wanna check out my next video, you're gonna love it. It's going to be the solution to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is c squared for the sides of a right triangle. So basically, what are all the integer solutions? What are all the right triangles with integer side lengths? You can actually give a single formula to solve and give all the possible right triangles with integer side lengths. It's gonna pop up on the screen. It's an introduction to the advanced subject of arithmetic geometry but in a way that pre-calculus students can understand. So, so too can anyone beyond. And here's another video you're going to love, which is going to be the proof that, you know, if P divides AB, then P divides A or P divides B. Just getting into that rigorous number theory. You're going to love that. Check that out here. Super excited to see you in the next video. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.